Hello, today I want to have a look at a turntable. Uh, this is a Yamaha turntable from somewhere around the mid 80s. The model number is Yamaha GT750 and apparently the GT stands for gigantic and tremendous. Um, so it might not be immediately obvious from the video, but this turntable is giant. It is far larger than your regular turntable and it is quite heavy and very uh, solid built. Um, we take a closer look here, the platter as well, uh, very substantial. Uh, very large, so uh, if you put on a 12 inch record, it's not gonna go all the way out here, it's actually only gonna go um, to this edge here, so uh, you can kind of get an idea how large this uh, uh, platter is. Um, it seems to run fine, I don't think there are any problems with the bearings or anything. I could probably use a bit of a polish here, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, it's a tiny bit of pitting but nothing too severe um, the arm over here uh, is quite a nice arm it's got all the features you need you can raise and lower the arm using this here uh, you got your anti-skating here and of course you can set the weight over here and you've got manual raising and lowering so this is a fully manual turntable um, only thing it's got is like automatic speed uh, controlled by a crystal Let's see here quartz lock so it's boss 33 and a third and 45 rpms um, however there is a small issue with the arm here you can see here if I take it out I'll take a close look here you can see it it kind of uh, it, it, there's a little bit of slack here in the bearings and that's not supposed to be there uh, it's only it appears to only be the bearings in here um, in the sides here so this might be a big problem or it might not be a big problem um, based on my experience I would say it is probably some low friction ball bearings that's in this arm but I can't say for sure I could be like if some turntables will actually have like sapphire uh, bearings in here if, and if it's like a sapphire bearing and it's a crushed sapphire then we might have a really, really big problem it could still be a big problem with ball bearings because um, maybe sometimes they have open ball bearings and the bolts fall out so if um, bolts are missing or maybe something uh, is completely wrong with the ball bearing it might not be easy to find a replacement um, so I think that's the first thing we're gonna have a look at um, let's try see if we can get this out have a closer look at what's going on here uh, why is it loose does it just need to be tightened or is there a problem so uh, let's we find some tools and then we take it from there uh, first, I'm just going to go ahead and remove a couple of things we don't need, uh, like the anti-skating weight here. I think we just take that out. All right. It's got these two small pieces here. And the weight on the back here. Just going to unscrew that. goes yeah okay so you can see the screw in here it's like uh, a screw in the middle and then it's like a lock screw on the outside so I just need to try and see if I can find a bit uh, that's gonna fit in there um, I think I do have some like this one here uh, it's too big if I have a smaller one, this one here, yeah, I think that will that will fit. 
Um, just see if I can get a small screwdriver. Okay, just going to try and carefully get this screw out here. Okay, see if there's any damage. And then it looks like I need a really tiny flat head uh, to go inside the middle here. Okay, came out. Let's see if there's any damage to this. Yeah, I don't see anything. This part looks good. Uh, I need to get the other side as well. It's the screw from the other side. Also, it doesn't look damaged. So, hey, that's a good start. So we have to be very careful with the small uh, cables that run inside the tone arm here. Uh, we don't want to break any of that stuff. Oop. I don't know if you can see that, but it certainly looks like we got a tiny ball bearing in here. That kind of looks okay. So I don't know what it's gonna look like on the other side. Here we have a look at the other side. So for what I can see here, it looks okay. I don't see any problems. Let's see if we can get this bearing to turn here. Yeah, I think actually I think it works by uh, the tip of the small screw is what contacts the balls in the bearing here. So, but as these look okay, I'm not quite sure why it ended up being loose. Um, I guess, I mean, it's always possible someone has been uh, tampering with it. Someone maybe uh, adjusted it at some point. It's also possible that maybe one of the uh, bearings were never fully seated or something like that. And then doing transportation or something, maybe it's uh, uh, moved a bit and that kind of made it. Uh, that was the reason for the slack, but I, I don't see any damage. So I think we'll put the screws back in and then try to see if we can adjust them to where we don't have any slack in the arm. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of grease uh, to the tip of the screws here before I screw them back in uh, just so the bearings don't run completely dry uh, this is just some lithium grease it's uh, low friction and uh, it's unlikely to gunk up over time okay I'm just pulling the screws back in here So I think we have to be very careful that uh, they ha it has to be centered. So the distance uh, on each side here is going to be uh, pretty much the same. Yeah, I can certainly tighten it up here so there's no slack left. And I think I think this is fairly well centered right now. So I'll see if I can tighten this without moving the inner screws too much. So it's like you want it to get 
you you want to tighten these screws just until the slag is gone. You don't want to make it too tight because you still want it to be very low friction here. Okay. Let's try to do the other side here. Tighten the outer screw. I don't want to over tighten anything here. Okay, now it feels very nice. Absolutely no slack, and I mean, there's no friction I can feel here. And I believe I got it fairly well centered as well. So now that we have the arm repaired, um, I think we should take a look at the platter, the motor, everything in here, see if everything looks okay and clean it up a little bit. Um, as I mentioned previously, it's fairly substantial platter. I think even the rubber mat here has probably got more mass than at most cheap turntable platters. Um, despite its age, the mat looks to be in good condition. It's still very rubbery, I don't see any cracks or anything like that, so that's good because it is uh, probably not something that's easy to get hold of, or it's probably not worth it. You would have to try to work something out if the uh, mat here is, is damaged. But this looks good, you can wash it. Um, I'll just use water, don't want to use anything that leaves a film uh, on, on the rubber here. Then we have the platter itself. Uh, you can kind of see it is very substantial. This is actually the, the thickness uh, of the aluminium or whatever uh, metal this is. I think it is just cast aluminium. Um, it seems to be very, very heavy. And all the mass it's at the edge, so the majority of the mass is going to be at the at the edge out here. So there's going to be a lot of inertia because it is so much bigger than a regular turntable platter. So, and uh, this is a direct drive turntable. Uh, so there's just one big big motor under here somewhere. Let's see if we can get it off. Ah, it seems to be stuck on there. It's probably not been off since it came out of the, of the factory. Give it a little bit of WD-40 here. Don't want it spraying everywhere. Let's just let that sit for a few minutes. Okay, it's been sitting for a few minutes here. Um, get the excess off here. See if it helps. Oh, there it comes. Oh, that's good. Um, so yeah, it is very heavy, very substantial. Uh, 
don't know how much it weighs, but uh, it's 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 a giant plasma. Okay. And looks a little bit dirty on here, but not too bad. And then we have um, the motor under here. Uh, I'm just gonna clean up some of this dust first. Uh, it looks very nice on here. It looks like the motor looks like it's new. This is probably the plaza I think has never been off before. See if we can open up the motor. Okay, got all the screws out. Let's see if we get a cover off here. Yeah. See, it looks like new inside here. Oop. Yep. Big magnet here. Uh, we got all coils in there. The motor. Everything looks good. There's nothing that looks uh, crazy in there, and there's no. The bearing here looks perfect. There's no pitting or anything like we often see on really old turntables. Could give it a little bit of new oil. Okay, we can try a cotton bud here. But the oil doesn't look bad at all. Okay, let's add a little bit of new oil. Okay, I have a tiny bit of oil here, um, just a high quality motor oil. It really doesn't need much. Just a couple of drops here. Yeah. Okay. See how well that that seals. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it here and wait for this to sink down. Cause this bearing is so tight. <laughs> The air cannot get out of the bottom. Okay, I left it here for maybe half an hour and now the bearing is finally sunk all the way down to the bottom. Um, not, in t I'm not exactly sure how long it took, but um, it's definitely down now. That's good. Uh, so I think we can reassemble the motor again, get the cover on, because everything looks perfect. Don't think this needs any specific orientation. I believe that was how I took it off.
Okay, so I think I want to clean the top here a bit while we have partially disassembled. I'm just going to use a little bit of IPA. I mean, it is moving stuff, but it might not be. Might need to use some soap, maybe a mild soap and some water. Uh, it seems like IPA is not going to cut it, so I'm just using a very mild soap here. Hopefully that's not going to cause any harm. So I'm just gonna go over and clean everything really thoroughly. Uh, it looks like it's cleaning up quite nicely. Um, you can see even the cables here are fairly dirty. Everything. It's quite dirty. Um, so it's probably not very exciting to watch. So I'm just gonna do this and then I'll show the result. Now I believe I got it completely cleaned off now. Um, it's looking a lot better. Actually, it was a lot more dirty than I thought it was, but it looks it looks really good now. So I think it's time to move on to the platter and see if we can polish it a bit. I also did a little bit of cleaning on the arm as well. Um, it wasn't that dirty, but uh, it looks even better now. So here we have the platter. I'm just going to give it a gentle wash and then I'll try to polish it up and see how good we can make it look. polish here so it actually looks quite nice now as a tiny bit of pitting I don't think I get rid of it uh, but it looks very good now uh, very shiny very nice so before I put the platter back on I want to just put a little bit of oil in here so it doesn't stick uh, too hard hopefully next time if I need to take it off again now that we got it all cleaned up, the final thing I want to do is have a quick look inside just to make sure we don't have any nasty surprises um, on the circuit boards inside. So on the inside here we got a 
the mains transformer. Uh, we got what appears to be a power supply board. And over here we have a motor controller board. Uh, so what I'm looking for here is just to see if uh, any of these capacitors um, look like they're starting to leak or anything looks out of order. So I mean this, what you see here, that is not a leaking capacitor, that is just glue. Um, so the capacitors in here, they are all Rubicon, uh, it's a good brand name. All the capacitors here, and I don't see anything, there's no bulging. They look good, so it doesn't look like we have a nasty surprise. And it's very simple here, right? We have our mains coming in over here. We have a full wave bridge rectifier here. We have a mains capacitor after the rectifier. And then we have some kind of regulator here. It's probably just a transistor and a little bit of capacitance on the output here. And motor controller. Well, the concern with uh, turntables like this is always if if some of these ICs here suddenly stop working, then there might not be any spare parts, there might not be any replacement available for them. Anyway, everything looks good here. I don't see anything that looks uh, nasty in any way. I don't see anything that looks like... Uh, we have to do anything about it, so I think I'm just going to close it up again, and uh, we'll try uh, fire it up and see how it how it spins. And here we have it, all back together, ready to play some records. Uh, it's probably going to be good for another 35 years or so. Um, everything works perfectly. So, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.